Today we're going to talk about knights and soldiers in medieval England and ancient Rome. Let's start with medieval England. Becoming a knight was considered to be a great honour. Only boys could become knights, and most came from families of nobility. Knights believed in the code of chivalry, which meant that they promised to defend the weak, be courteous to all women, be loyal to their king, and serve God at all times. When a boy was eight years old, he was sent to a neighboring castle where he was trained as a page. He spent most of his time strengthening his body by wrestling and riding horses. He also learned to fight with a spear and a sword. The lady of the castle taught the page how to sing and dance and how to behave in the king's court. At the age of approximately 15 or 16, a boy became a squire in service to a knight. This meant that his duties included preparing the knight's clothing, serving all of the knight's meals, caring for his horse, and cleaning the knight's armor and weapons. He followed the knight to tournaments and assisted his lord on the battlefield. A squire also prepared for battle himself and learned how to handle a sword and lance while wearing 40 pounds of armor and riding a horse. When he was about 20, a squire could become a knight after proving himself worthy. A lord would agree to knight him in a dubbing ceremony. The night before the ceremony, the squire would fast, which means to not eat, and would pray all night. When the morning came, he took a bath to show that he was pure and dressed in a white tunic. The outdoor ceremony took place in front of family, friends, and other nobility. The squire would kneel in front of the lord, who would then tap him lightly on each shoulder with a sword and proclaim him as a knight. A great feast would follow that ceremony with lots of music and dancing. Here's an example of what armor and weapons looked like in medieval England. A knight could never go into battle unprotected. He depended on his squire to keep his armor and weapons clean and in good working condition. At first, armor was made of small metal rings called chain mail. A knight wore a linen shirt and a pair of pants, as well as a heavy woolen pads underneath the metal ringed tunic. A suit of chain mail could have more than 200,000 rings. Chain mail was heavy, uncomfortable, and difficult to maneuver in. As time passed, knights covered their bodies with plates of metal. These plates covered their chests, back, arms, and legs. A bucket-like helmet protected the knight's head and had a hinged metal visor to cover his face. Suits of armor were hot, uncomfortable, and could weigh between 40 and 60 pounds. Some knights even protected their horses with armor. A knight also needed a shield to hold in front of himself during battle. These would be made of either wood or metal. Knights decorated their shields with their family emblem or crest, as well as the family motto. A knight's ma main weapon was his sword, which weighed about 30 pounds. It was worn on his left side in a case fastened around his waist. A knife was typically worn on the knight's right side. Knights used other weapons in combat as well. A lance, for example, was a long spear used in jousts. Metal axes, battle hammers, and maces were also used to defeat the enemy. In Roman army, you will notice that there are some similarities and a lot of differences. The Roman army was the largest and meanest fighting force in the ancient world. One of the reasons that Rome became so powerful was because of all of the strength of its army. It conquered an empire that stretched from Britain all the way to the Middle East. The army was very advanced for its time. Their soldiers were highly trained, and they had the best weapons and the best armor. Being a soldier was a serious business. When the Romans invaded Britain, their army was so good that it took out armies ten times its own size and won. Only men could be in the Roman army. No women were allowed. There were two types of Roman soldiers, legionnaires and auxiliaries. The legionaries were the best soldiers. A legionary had to be over 17 years old and had to be a Roman citizen. Every new recruit had to be fit enough to fight. Anyone who was weak or too short would be rejected from the army. Legionaries typically signed up for at least 25 years of service, but they, if they survived that time, they were rewarded with a gift of land that they could farm. Remember, in that time, not everyone was able to own their own land. Old soldiers often retired together in military towns called colonia. An auxiliary was a soldier who was not a Roman citizen. He was only paid a third of a legionary's wage. 
Auxiliaries could guard forts and frontiers, but also fought in battles, often in the front lines, where it was the most dangerous. This is because these soldiers were more disposable. That meant that they were somewhat less important than the legionaries. On the left here, I have an image of armor and weapons in ancient Rome. You'll see that there's a javelin, a sword, a tunic, sandals, a helmet, armor, and a shield. A Roman soldier's helmet was called a gelia. It had special guards to protect their cheeks and neck. Soldiers could also attach a crest made of horse hair to the top of their helmets. However, ordinary legionaries probably didn't wear this in battle. Historians believe that it was just used for parades or formal ceremonies. Body armor was made from overlapping iron plates held together by leather straps and brass clasps. The armor was heavy and very tough, so a legionary would wear a tunic underneath for padding. The legionary had to march all day carrying his armor and weapons. Together with his cooking pots and tools, a soldier's equipment could weigh around 35 kilograms. Roman legionaries carried a large rectangular shield known as a scutum. This was curved to help protect the soldier's body, and it had a hard iron bulge in the middle for battering their enemies in battle. Soldiers would lift their shields over their heads for protection when fired at from above. They looked like a tortoise, so they called this formation the testudo, which is Latin for tortoise. Before charging into battle, a Roman legionary would hurl his spear into the ranks of the enemy. The spear was known as a pilum, and was made from wood with a sharp iron spike at the end. The long spike was designed to lodge in an enemy's shield so it couldn't be used anymore. A Roman soldier's trusty sword was called a gladius. It was quite small and light, which made it good for stabbing and slashing in battle. Roman soldiers wore their swords on the right at first, but by 300 AD, most Romans wore their swords on the left.